Uh, my name is Mike Flowers. I run a Skunk Works for Mayor Bloomberg that's focused on using our data to allocate our resources more effectively. Why do we do that? Because we're trying to make your lives easier uh, in any way we can while spending uh, or allocating those resources as effectively as we, as we can so we don't have to tax you uh, as heavily as we uh, have in the past. So I'm just going to go right into it. The office is pretty much designed around trying to figure out how to take what we know about our locations and our businesses and our people and turn it into something usable. Um, there's a lot of problems with doing that, a lot of challenges that we get presented with. For example, uh, here we are at the Hilton in City Speak. The Hilton is a latitude and a longitude. It's a postal address. It's a borough block and lot tax number. It's a building identification number uh, and a number of other uh, things that for each agency indicate where it needs to go to do what it needs to do. But in terms of leveraging all of that information on behalf of one another, it becomes extraordinarily difficult from, from an ontology and a taxonomy standpoint. Moreover, all of those pieces of information are stored in different parts of the city, so it's incredibly fragmented. The systems themselves range from the brand new and awesome to play with to things that you probably might have seen. They, they really aren't that much different from like Pong. So you're like old mainframe systems that are, re that are really difficult to, to play with. Uh, so what we needed to do was come up with a way to demonstrate the utility of a common platform. I needed to go out and demonstrate to the community, the New York City governmental community, that it made sense for us to put this information together and use it. That was our job. That's what the Skunk Works was really about. So we have lots of data, as I described. We have uh, BIN is a building identification number. Uh, borough block and lot, et cetera. There are business licenses. There are parking tickets. There are, you know, health inspections. There are all kinds of things that we know. But we know that through very fragmented sources. So then the question became, what, do we, what can we do with this? Well, New York City receives about 65,000 311 complaints a day. What does that mean? That means that we get phone calls from the citizenry ranging, uh, saying things that are non-emergency, ranging from, I got sick at this burrito stand, to there's a ferret in my backyard, somebody come take care of it, or whatever. Right? These are non-emergency events. So we gear our allocation of our agency resources based on basically a simple cue. A call comes in, and then we respond to that call. So uh, I'm going to kind of use it as a case study our legal conversion work. A legal conversion is, is a, a situation where a landlord takes a space that is safely zoned for six human beings to live in and chops it up to put 60 in there, and they do it for money. I mean, unless there's some kind of sociopath. But for the most part, they do it. They just want to charge more money. So if you look at this map, this is a simple heat map of illegal conversion complaints in New York City. Lower Manhattan blows up like a tomato. We allocate our resources accordingly. Okay? However... This is what illegal conversion conditions look like in New York City. It's like a photographic negative. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that we're sending our resources where the complaints are instead of where the conditions are. And those conditions are very serious. They're very serious. And why are they serious? In the, about spring and summer of 2011, we had two buildings go up in flames that had been illegally converted. And we had some firemen get seriously injured, and we had people die. And my, my office was tasked with figuring out how to fix that. So what we did was we deconstructed the vacates. A vacate is a condition where an inspector shows up and the place is so unsafe that the building has to get emptied in whole or in part. That's what we deconstructed. I didn't deconstruct the complaints. I deconstructed the problem. And I deconstructed the problem using city data. The city data ranged from high-risk neighborhood, which is just code for, like, where do our poorer citizens live who are much more likely to live in dangerous, dangerous conditions than others. Was the building built before 1938? 1938 matters because that's when the building code changed. Axiomatically, a building constructed after a change in the building code is going to be safer. So those that were built before are less safe. Liz Pennens is lawyer speak for a foreclosure. Uh, tax lien is kind of a first cousin of foreclosure. The reason those two are very important is it just speaks to the owner financial condition. And I don't think there's anything revelatory in the fact that if, somebody's, if a landlord is broke, they're going to treat their building like crap. So that's what we focused on. And then finally, a complaint. So complaints do matter. If there was a prior complaint, there was, uh, it was, and then a subsequent complaint six months later, 
it was much more likely that there was going to be a fire. So we just simply reallocated our resources, reprioritized our resources based on those metrics. Moreover, if you look at those locations that have all five of those metrics, there's a lot more fire per property, and more importantly, or just as importantly, a lot more firemen get injured and killed when going to those kinds of fires. Why? Because when you chop up a place, you're blocking exits. That means a fireman has to jump out of a four-story window to get to the ground, God forbid, and they die. We can't have that. So we focus on the red, not the blue. And the results. The results have been fantastic. This is, uh, but I want to explain why this is slightly misleading. Pre-targeting, that just means you didn't, uh, when the Department of Buildings went out to those complaints with the, that I showed you with Lower Manhattan blowing up like a tomato, 13% of the time they were getting locations that were so unsafe that they had to vacate them. When they go to the buildings that we send them to, they're vacating them 70% of the time. And this has been done for now 18 months. However, in that first population, the pre-targeting population is about 20, 25,000 complaints a year. In targeted, we send them to 600. So it's a small universe. So it's, it's mildly misleading to have them next to each other like that. But also, those 600 are far more likely to go up in flames. So that's where we should be sending our people. It's much more efficient. Now, how will we be able to pull this off? Uh, I have a very small, young staff. I don't pay them very much. I love them. Uh, they're very young. <laughs> uh, you know, for the record, I don't get much myself. Uh, you know, we got started on this analysis using very old computers that were very difficult to work with in Microsoft Excel. We would load a spreadsheet of basically every property in town, about a million of them, would populate them with all these different attributes that we knew about from city data. It got to the point where we're loading the thing, took us about, I don't know, about four hours. And so we would load, we'd start loading it, we'd go out to dinner, come back, play paper football with one another, and then the thing would finally load. Uh, but why did we win? We won because we had the right data. The city's data is good. Right? And we used it the right way. We jujitsued it to a certain degree. I didn't really care what year the building was constructed in. It was just very binary. Was it before or after this date? That's fine. I can work with that. Um, moreover, we got out in the field. I talked to firemen. I talked to policemen. I talked to inspectors from the buildings department, housing preservation development, the water department, and asked them, well, you go to a place that's a dump, what do you see? Right? And then I replicated that in the data. And then finally, the tool we came up with was eminently usable by the buildings department from the get-go, immediately leverageable. They're already sending inspectors out. All we did was prioritize. So it was immediately actionable intelligence. It wasn't anything fancy. So that's why it worked. Now, it's not easy. Uh, the, the web shot is an article from the Daily News blasting us for not actually curing illegal conversions in the city. Uh, and then the other thing is a lawsuit that was filed against me for acting contrary to the collective bargaining agreement. Um, we won that. Uh, and, you know, these are the kinds of challenges that we as a city face. It's a little bit different from the private sector. I mean, obviously, we're very concerned about bottom line issues, but we are also extremely concerned about public perception because we serve the public, as we are supposed to. And we also have labor issues that are constant. Right? This is a very asymmetrical approach to our problems, and frankly, collective bargaining agreements and asymmetry do not go together well. So we have to figure out a way to work with that. So now what? I'm going to run over. I apologize. Uh, so what do we do now? So, OK, the Skunk Works worked. I proved the concept. This makes sense. So what are we going to do? We're going to systemize this so that I don't need to run around, sneak a net, and get thumb drives from people and start loading data into some ancient system. We're going to start loading all of these data streams in real time, separated by just very basic buckets, location, business, person, so that agencies themselves can do this. Moreover, having built that kind of resource, I'll be able to grow and, and, and enable this culture out there among the agencies so it won't matter that I'm out of a job in January 2014 when the mayor leaves. Uh, so, uh, and then finally, that aggregation of data means we can push it out to the public. Now, New York City data mine is, is, you know, I know a lot of people knock it, but you've got to give them credit. They went through first. They tried to take everything that we had and push it out to the public. What we want to do now is make it dynamic, and we can do that now. So, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, again, I want to thank you all for coming to New York City. Uh, enjoy yourselves, see a show, and uh, have, have a good time. Thanks very much.